untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a slightly different build of the Mono Green Devotion archetype, this time foregoing Karn in the main deck and making room for more creatures such as Olvenwald Oddity, a 4 mana 4-4 four four with Trample and Haste, and for 7 mana we can transform it into Olvenwald Behemoth and 8-8 eight eight with Trample and Haste, giving other creatures we control plus 1 plus 1 Trample and Haste. So this makes for a nice play alongside Kiora to draw an extra card, building up our devotion, and eventually once we can generate a lot of mana with Nykthos, we can transform it, giving the entire team plus one plus one trample and haste, means we can potentially kill the opponent out of nowhere after generating a lot of mana. And that's something the builds with Karn definitely lacked, even though you can set up some convoluted infinite combos with Karn, they usually take a lot of clicking and they're not that intuitive, especially on the arena interface, so Behemoth makes that a lot more straightforward, just play a bunch of creatures out, give them trample and haste, and smash the opponent in the face. And then we also have four copies of Keruga as another way to kind of complement that game plan. A 5-4, when it enters the battlefield we get to draw a card for each author permanent we control with mana value 3 or greater. So that can also draw a ton of cards, especially with a Kiora in play, drawing an extra card when a creature enters with power 4 or greater. And then it can also draw off extra copies of Olvenwald Oddity, Good Cavalier, Troll and Steel Leaf Champion, all contributing towards Keruga. And then if we draw a lot of cards, generate a lot of mana with Nykthos, as we increase our devotion as well, we can sink all that mana into playing more creatures, like the Oddity and potentially transforming it in the very same turn. And then now with more 5 drops in the deck, we also have a higher likelihood of having an exciting Storm the Festival, which still gets to take a look at the top 5 cards to put up to 2 permanents with mana value 5 or less from among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom. So that can also be a way to find our Nykthos if we don't have one already, can also flash it back out of the graveyard, so it can be another mana sink, can maybe even mill it with our Cavalier of Thorns, which is another way to find Nykthos to generate all that mana. And uh, yeah, the rest of the deck is pretty straightforward, much like the previous Devotion build, 8 1 mana elves, 4 copies of Haven, typically want at least one of these in our opening hand for it to be keepable, and then ideally we also have a Kiora to untap a land with Haven on it to make 2 mana, or eventually Nykthos to generate a ton of extra green mana. And then uh, Steel Leaf Champion, also not a card you usually see in these green devotion builds, but it makes sense here as an extra creature to make devotion, draw cards with Keruga, and maybe smash the opponent with a transformed Ulfenwald Behemoth. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this, so let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems reasonable. Elves into Haven for ramp, facing a blue-green ramp deck. Make that Teamer, so potentially a Legend deck, never mind, Gala Greeters. Alright, could go for Kyura over Haven now. Why do I love Just can't and then next turn Haven, untap Haven is 4 mana, so plays an Oddity with a land. Can go for Cavalier. Hazardous Monument, so I guess this... Maybe a uh, Burgi combo deck with Grinning Ignis. And yeah, Valley also played in those decks as a finisher. Ooh, Nykthos was a nice draw. Let's see here, still Haven on tap Haven, and yeah, go for Cavalier. Backup Nykthos doesn't do much for me, so grab a forest. Alright, so next turn, Nykthos should help us go off. Opponent's got two cards in hand, Risen Reef one of them. So shouldn't be in any immediate danger of dying to the combo, unless Collected Company is involved. And there's an Innkeeper. Okay. Opponent happy with the card in hand, so presumably one of the combo pieces. Opponent passes, so let's make this happen. Step one, activate Nykthos. 
and then probably play another Cavalier of Thorns. Finding a forest. Find a bank of Nykthos. Alright, so we're definitely going off here. Let's see. Uh, two mana, so don't think I can cast anything else before untapping Nykthos. The ocean surges, life thrives. So now we could storm with a festival, perhaps. Finding Cavalier and Kiora. So we should definitely have the kill this turn. Cavalier finds another Nykthos, because why not? So I can play Oddity and then activate Nykthos, tapping the Elves. Get the most out of it. Then we can still untap with Kiora. And we're not super likely to find another Nykthos, so I think I'm happy playing Cavalier. And then I guess in response I could technically activate Nykthos, just in case we find another one. But I doubt it. Alright, just a forest. Draw with Kiora. Another Storm the Festival, just have to be mindful of decking at this stage. So let's Storm the Festival. Find Steel Leaf and Keruga. Draw a bunch of cards. Ten cards left. Alright, let's uh, end the game. Play a couple more Oddities. And then we haven't played land for the turn yet. Bunch more mana. Transform all the oddities. And that should do it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This is a mulligan as we don't have any early accelerants. This is better. So probably ditch one elf. And this is just kind of a stompy draw. Turn two we could play troll. Turn three oddity if we draw land. Or I could play haven to ensure oddity next turn. Yeah, that's maybe still better. Opponent also on a devotion strategy with turn to Haven. Alright, start beating down. And Nykthos would be lovely still, since we have quite a bit of devotion. Can expect Cavalier next turn. So, yeah, play another Oddity. And smash. Probably fine to attack with the elves as well. If the opponent wants to trade for theirs. Opponent down to seven, so yeah, Cavalier's gonna stem the bleeding. Storm the festival, I guess, good too. But nope, opponent missed, and yeah, double oddity gets the job done. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hand could work out quite nicely if we get to curve out. Although turn one, Thoughtseize might have something to say about it. Mystic down. So now our curve looks a lot worse. Etherborn, so probably a devotion strategy is my guess. Etherborn's not bad against us, but at least... Uh, I get to play Kiora and still play Lanor Elves. Not a rag, but my nature flows with vigor. 
no removal end of turn. So we could already ramp into something big next turn and our opponent has given up since they know the rest of our hands we can play cavalier and we get to rank up to diamonds so yeah early thought seize was effective but our opponent couldn't quite follow it up okay we're on the play and no ramp means mulligan this is much better so what do we get rid of probably one of the last two cards and uh yeah storm the festival has more potential than cavalier even though Cavalier draws off Kiora and could mill another Storm the Festival. Yeah, I guess I'll actually keep the Cavalier. Also, if something does go wrong, opponent maybe kills our elf or takes away one of our ramp cards. Cavalier's a little bit easier to cast. Opponent on the mono blue, so Spell Pierce could hit Kiora. Otherwise, this should be good to go. And then we can play another elf. So next turn we can already set up Cavalier. Of course, tricky to resolve against a mono blue deck. So that's the downside of trying to cast all these 4 and 5 drops as opposed to maybe having a lower curve like elf tribal. Opponent's got the uh, Cure Obsession, so if they have the counter spell that's discounted by spirits and enchantments, they could still cast it. And that's maybe a reason to wait on playing Cavalier. And yeah, I mean, it's counter spell unless you pay three. And if I set up Haven, we could maybe pay the three next turn. Although, of course, that's another turn of Sailor drawing a card, and they could have another counterspell by then. So, it's not ideal. So if I go for Cavalier now, I could still cast it by untapping my Enchanted Forest. But, uh, don't think I'm gonna go for it. So I could attack with the Mystics. If they flash in another Sailor, that's fine by me. So nothing end of turn. And a Supreme Phantom, that's good news. So now we should be able to resolve Cavalier even through a counterspell. get to draw off Kiora. Just the forests. So yeah, just relying on Cavalier as a blocker now, but it does have reach. So it's not too bad. So Shackle guys to tap it down could be an issue. Fading Hope to bounce, at least we can replay it and draw more cards next turn. Although they may have other counter spells available. Opponent goes face, draws another card, another Supreme Phantom, so they could still have counter spells unless we pay 6 available, although more realistically unless we pay 4, so should be able to resolve Cavalier. And then do I need to use Kiora beforehand? So this is 5 mana, yeah I think it's safer to do so. Upside of not using Cure is if we find a Nykthos, we can untap it, but we've got another Cure on hand to maybe help with that. Alright, that resolves. And there's Nykthos. So now we're in business. Should be able to resolve Kiruga. Draw more cards. Storm the Festival, great too. So, activate Nykthos. So do I play Kiruga first, or do I untap Nykthos first? Maybe Nykthos untapped is uh, safer here. Time, 
So I can untap it now to play around more conditional counter spells. Even though if Keruga is in play, we would be able to make a little bit more mana. Could also go for Storm the Festival. So this leaves me with four, five, six, seven mana. Yeah, maybe Storm the Festival first is still the way to go. And found another Kiora for sure, and then Oddity could be a win condition. Troll adds a little bit more devotion. I think we want more devotion. Get to draw two since Kiora saw the troll enter the battlefield before it uh, got replaced. So untap Nykthos again. And then now it's uh, time for another storm. Finding probably just two lands which I can still tap this turn. Alright. Kiruga to refuel. Poseidon can also hit the Cure Obsession now, for what it's worth. Cavalier I'm not expecting to resolve, but might as well. Right, and there's a Geistlight Snare. And then I'll just play Boseju plus Elf. So opponent's got eight in play. So Shackle guy tapping Cavalier or Bounce Spell into another Phantom could be lethal. Otherwise next turn we should be able to keep comboing. But yeah, not a bad turn. If we didn't have to respect a conditional counter spell, definitely would have been able to make more devotion and then uh, be more likely to just win that turn. But they did have a Geist Light Snare, like we suspected. Soaring City to bounce, okay. So we're still taking eight. They could finish off Kiora if they would like. Because at this point, I don't think our opponent's getting another turn. Mausoleum Wanderer, that's fine. Okay, so... Just keeping track of our graveyard real quick. So step one, play Cavalier of Thorns. And then maybe activate Nykthos in response to the Cavalier trigger. In case we find another Nykthos. Did not. In fact, milled a bunch of good cards. Kiruga to draw. Okay, so the main concern now is running out of uh, copies of Oddity. There's two in the graveyard, so still two left in the deck. So we should be able to hit it with Storm the Festival, so we'll go for it now. They can sack Mausoleum Wanderer. I'll pay three. All right, old growth troll and a land. And draw off Kiora, find Oddity. That's what we needed. So we'll play Oddity. And draw off Kiora. Find a troll. Draw off Kiora. Still haven't untapped Nykthos. And a Cavalier should still be safe to play here. Could also go for Keruga, which admittedly is more fun. So sure, let's say we go for Keruga. Find another Nykthos. Play Nykthos. Play Elf. Oddity can draw. And then... I think we're done casting creatures. 
Time to activate all the tea. And this should be enough. All right, sweet. So yeah, close game against Mono Blue. They had the early Sailor into Enchantment and keep up Snare on turn two, which is their best start. But uh, luckily we got to resolve a few Cavaliers to ramp and then Nick those did the rest. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're missing a 1-mana Elf. Is this still keepable? I don't think so. If we had a Wolf Hollow Haven, this would be okay. As is, it just feels too slow. Alright, this is better. And one Elf can go. So we've got early ramp, missing a payoff. Opponent on the heroic deck with a Swift Spear. Turn to Troll, not a bad blocker at least. Virtuoso, that can certainly kill out of nowhere. Kiora would have been nice to have him play before playing the Troll. For now, I guess Kiora play Haven. And keep the troll back. So we'd love to find Keruga, Cavalier of Thorns, even an Ulvenwald Oddity we can transform. Opponent starts growing Virtuoso, at some point they can give it protection from green to just hit us directly. Happy to block Virtuoso to force another pump spell. Alright, God's willing, so pretty happy they had to use it here. Still keep our devotion, in case we find Nykthos. Alright, so we've got all the mana in the world, just missing a payoff card for it. So, yeah, it's not looking great. Could sacrifice Wolf Low Haven to make a token, which may be necessary. Can hang on to Boseju, but don't expect the opponent to show many targets for it. Another Courage. Happily Chum Virtuoso. Can they give a trample with a Rampage? They can. So I think that leaves us dead. Ten power double strike will do that. Alright, so yeah, had a reasonable start but just missed the uh, ramp payoff, which will happen sometimes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Keruga as companion, so probably a Fires of Invention build. So normally I wouldn't necessarily want to keep a hand without Elf or Haven, but since your opponent might have access to Stomp and Temporary Lockdown as a way to answer cheap permanence, I think I'm actually happy to keep a hand that has a Kiora and a Nykthos, and then a pretty good late game. Even though that also plays into the opponent's game plan, still happy with a turn 1 Elf off the top of course, even if it may not survive. If it does, we can set up turn 2 Kiora. Alright, let's go for it, and then I'll hide Nykthos for the time being, even though Poseju could have also answered fires, don't necessarily want to ramp the opponent. So, opponent's got the Binding end of turn to exile Kiora, but we've got plenty of replacements. And now a Fable. Alright, so do I go for Troll here? 
or still go for Kiora. Oddity also an option, although it doesn't add as much devotion and I probably want to leave a blocker for the Shaman. So I could see the advantage of Troll. And then next turn we can actually generate mana with Nykthos. So hopefully they can't exile my Troll. And there's the Fires of Invention. What's the follow-up? Another Fable. So we get to keep Troll. And Cavalier was a nice draw too. So sequencing now. Activate Nykthos. Play Kiora. Two mana left. Untap Nykthos. And then we can still play Cavalier. Yeah, that's gonna be the way to go. Could also try and play Cavalier first, but that's basically where it ends. Play Cavalier. Haven't played a land yet for the turn, so wouldn't mind drawing one. Cavalier finds forests. And Kiora finds troll. Alright. But we'll be able to draw a ton of cards of Kiruga here. But next turn we could do some damage with Nykthos. Opponent on a Fabled Passage build with plenty of basics. Those are for Omnath. So less likely to have Enigmatic Incarnation, which would be kind of scary here with Binding, getting a 7-drop. Kenrith, yeah, that's a good one too. Opponent can play Kiruga and then still give the team haste thanks to Kenrith. And then Reflection can copy a creature as well, although won't be able to copy any of the legendaries at least. And we have some reasonable blockers available. Opponent's cast are two spells for the turn, so don't need to worry about a burn spell finishing off Cavalier. Our opponent just copies the Shaman. I guess we do still need to worry about Kenrith adding a plus one counter somewhere. Troll can block a Shaman. Cavalier probably also blocks a Shaman, or we could double block Kenrith. Although, would like to preserve all my devotion next turn. So, I guess what we could do is just chump Kenrith as opposed to double blocking with a troll, since I'll keep my devotion that way. And then block the shaman. Although I guess Kiora dying is not the end of the world since we have another one in hand. Yeah, if I just block the shaman that's attacking Kiora, they'll pump Kenrith up to a 6-6 to finish her off. But uh, yeah, we've got a backup, so maybe I don't care. So Kenrith takes out Kira. Like fighting anyway. If I Kira first, I need to untap Nykthos right away, but uh, there's always a chance of hitting another Kira, although there's only one left in the deck. So, yeah, I think if we storm first, we may still be able to uh, play Kiora afterwards, untap Nykthos and keep going. Although that assumes we find two lands or Nykthos with it. Or I guess Cavalier finding a land also works. Haven also works. So we have quite a few outs. All right, Haven and Forests, so... Enchant untapped Forests. And then we can still play Kiora. Untap Nykthos and activate it. And then the next step... Probably... Storm the Festival again. Hitting Nykthos and I guess Mystic adds Devotion. Can play Oddity, which I can still activate. If I activate now, this transforms up to an 8-8. Eight eight. Do we have lethal? Yeah, I think we do. Barely. Okay. 
So the opponent not having the mana to gain life with Kenrith anymore actually made a difference. Although possible that the play of double blocking Kenrith and aiming for a longer game also could have worked out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems functional. Haven sets up an early cavalier. We've got our Nykthos already. Facing sort of a junt, maybe sacrifice deck. As we see a turn 2 Harvester. Ooh, Kiora was nice. So I can play Nykthos, play Kiora, untap Haven, still play a Steel Leaf Champion. If I play another Haven first, that also works. Yeah, sure, why not? And we get to draw. And then next turn, Cavalier ready to find more action, hopefully milling a Storm the Festival. Oddity will draw off Kiora as well. So a great start, despite not having a turn 1 elf. Fatal Push deals with Steel Leaf, thanks to the Blood Token enabling the Revolt. So, a bit of a setback. Nykthos doesn't make as much mana now. Can still play Cavalier, and then probably gonna untap the forest with Kiora as opposed to Nykthos. And take it from there. Found, I think, just a forest to play Lenor Elves. And we milled the Storm Festival, so that's nice. So let's see, if I untap my forest, I can still play Nykthos from hand, and then Elf is free. Activates, making 8 mana total, so double oddity. Seems like the play. Smash for 8, and Keruga, the perfect follow-up, and our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, with Elf into Kiora, ramping into Keruga, so that's a keep. Let's see what our opponent's working with. Just a tap land, and found a Nykthos as well. So all according to plan. Kiruga will draw quite a few cards next turn between Kiora and then Kiruga itself. Alright, let's see if we can get our revenge against the heroic deck. So, play Nykthos, doesn't make any additional mana right now, but uh, next turn should be good to go. And can play another elf. Ancestral Anger to kick things off on the Virtuoso. So, yeah, expecting that to kill me, if not next turn, the turn after. Rage to kill Kiruga, we don't mind, since we have a backup. They may go after Kiora here, which is a wise move. So, yeah, that works. So now Kiruga doesn't draw us any extra cards. So Oddity first makes sense. Hit for six. And then next turn I could also transform the oddity if it's still around. But uh, we might be dead to the Virtuoso, let's see. Swiss Spear. Ancestral Anger. 
So it'll need maybe double homestead courage here. So looks like we'll get to live another turn. And we'll have to do some math here. So let's say we activate Nykthos, enough to transform Oddity. That hits for 8 plus another 6, that's 14. Yeah, probably no need for Keruga. Opponent may have some protection spells, but don't expect any removal. And that's exactly he's on board. Awesome. So we got our revenge in style, thanks to our oddity, which is kind of the signature card of this build alongside Kiruga. So yeah, definitely a deck that needs to have that early ramp with elves, with uh, Wolf of Haven, hopefully alongside Kiora as well. So you can actually start leveraging that early mana advantage, and then Kiruga can be a solid way to take hold of the game and make sure it doesn't slip away. And uh, yeah, do give up Karn in the process, which can be valuable in some matchups, especially against Grease Fang, as a way to stop the artifacts from being crude in the first place, as well as maybe getting some sideboard graveyard hate. But uh, Karn does have some disadvantages against aggressive decks, it doesn't always stick around, and of course it doesn't provide you with additional devotion, which some of these other creatures do. So I'm not sure what the final verdict is on this deck, if it's better than the original build with Karn, but it's definitely a lot more straightforward to just playing more creatures, drawing more cards, and then hopefully smashing the opponent in the face. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.